Hi everyone, Dr. Garner here. I wanted to talk a little bit about the SCM, or what is known as the sternocleidomastoid, which is this muscle here. And that's how you can grab it. If, you, if you're looking straight ahead, you really shouldn't see the sternocleidomastoid. If someone breathes incorrectly, it's hard for me to breathe <laughs> incorrectly, but if they breathe incorrectly, repeatedly, it's hard for me to get mine to stand out. But if someone does that repeatedly, you'll begin to see this muscle stand out even at rest. And we don't want that. So if you're stress breathing, I call it stress breathing or pain breathing. It's when you're breathing in such a way that it sends a stress or pain signal to the brain. And even if you don't realize that you're stress breathing, it doesn't matter, your body picks that up and then interprets it as a fight, flight, or freeze response. So that's why you wanna make sure that the SCM is not standing out. If it is, it is going to send that altered message of stress or pain, stress or pain, fight, flight, or freeze um, to your brain. And your vagus nerve certainly doesn't appreciate that either. It impairs the vagal break. So what's the point of talking about the SEM? It's a radar. It is a radar for a couple of things. If you see it when you're breathing at rest, then you're more likely to have that stress or pain response. Even if you do not feel stress or pain, it's going to increase your likelihood that you have it. So in order to, to know if you see that, you will look at yourself and seated or standing, resting, and you shouldn't have any tension here. To know if you have resting tension, because this is point two. The second point is the SCM is the vice grip of the voice. So if you are having issues with the voice and this muscle's tight, and I'm gonna show you again how to hold that, is turn the head, and as you turn the head, as you take two fingers of your opposite hand down to your clavicle, your collarbone, and you turn your head, you will fall right under the muscle and you can grab it with the two fingers on each hand. You can actually work your way up. You can work your way up all the way up to the muscle, uh, all the way up the muscle to its attachment point at the mastoid process here. That's that bone behind your ear here. It runs from here and attaches to the collarbone and the sternum and the breastbone. So it attaches, it has two heads, it attaches down here in two places. That is A, a vice grip for your voice, and B, it is your radar for your stress response. So your sternocleidomastoid is quite important. And um, you know, if that muscle's tight, I would recommend that you go and watch the orofacial release part one, because you're gonna find some new things that are probably holding tension that you didn't know were there. The other thing is, as I just sit here and take an inhale, right, you shouldn't see the muscle begin to stand out with time. It's all red now for me poking at it, but you shouldn't see it standing out, especially if I take a quick inhale, right? You shouldn't see that stand out. So you might have at rest no sternocleidomastoid tension or SCM tension, but if you have that tension, I'm going to try and do it. See how if I, if I do it several times in a in a row, I can start, which I already feel stress from that, right? You can start to recruit it artificially. So if I sat here and demonstrated for you another three or four times wrong, I might actually carry that stress res response with me throughout the rest of the day, which I don't wanna have. So if you notice that at rest, I want you to practice being aware of it. Some things that I'll have patients do is again, capture it and actually work, just do a little massage all the way up and all the way back down the SEM. That is also really helpful. Note, because I am the voice to pelvic floor PT um, and yogi, I just want to point out that 
tension here has a ripple effect down into the respiratory diaphragm and into the pelvic diaphragm. It also has adverse impacts on hip health because I'm super big on my pelvic girdle and hip health. So if you have issues in downstream, um, make sure that you're looking all the way up to this top orofacial area because that can really give you a big clue and big relief into how you are actually doing from a three diaphragm approach. The other piece of the puzzle is, um, as I emphasize in most of my videos, if you're having a downstream approach, uh, a down ripple, downstream effect on the respiratory diaphragm or the pelvic diaphragm, again, don't forget to look at the whole piece of the puzzle, um, all three pieces of the voice to pelvic floor um, issue, and don't let a practitioner tell you that they're not related. They are. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, share it with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Um, and look out for the new stuff that's coming soon on YouTube. If you want to get on the email list, the, then look in the comment in the description. You should be able to sign up for the email list there too, so that you know what new offerings um, are happening. Thanks for listening.